Okay, just got to the Moat of Mark in Galloway. It's an ancient hill fort of the early medieval Britons. Let's go have a look. It's 535 AD. The Western Roman Empire is dead. Internal rot and external invasion crumbling that largest state Europe had ever known. Into petty kingdoms and warring principalities, now ruled over by barbarian warlords and the descendants of imperial generals. In Britain, that most remote outpost of the Roman world, the situation is about to get even worse. For in that year, ferried across the seaways from the south, plague arrives on the island. In the South, any sort of unified political order is already a relic of the past. Coinage is gone, even city life for the most part having disappeared. Vast ruins left desolate on the landscape. Yet Rome's influence still lingers. Christianity still holding a firm grip upon the populace. Though from the East, an older religion and way of life begins to take hold. But in the North, beyond Hadrian's Wall, in lands never fully conquered, the collapse wasn't so severe. This is the age of heroes battling to save the very way of life of their people. Of forlorn monasteries, tiny enclaves of literacy desperately attempting to cling on to some semblance of the world before. Of invaders from beyond the sea. In history, it's the age of Ambrosius Aurelianus, of Gildas, of Cherdich. But above all else, it's an age of myth and legend, of Arthur and Merlin. My name's Pete Kelly, and this is my dad. In September 2020, in a brief moment of peace sandwiched between two national lockdowns, we went north to have a look for ourselves, to one of the most historic regions in all of Britain. An ancient land where that early medieval past is much more visible than most. Vast citadels and ruins still standing untouched on the landscape. Straddling the Irish Sea at a crossroads between north, south, east and west, this is Galloway.
Today, our first stop on the journey is the tiny village of Rockcliffe and the great citadel of kings which once thrived here. Let's take a look. It's coming! Anyway, so who is this bloke, Mark? Okay, so in the 19th century, the Victorians became very interested in their own past. And uh, there were lots of different peoples in the past they were interested in. One of them in particular was the Celtic people. And King Arthur, obviously, was a Briton, a Celtic Briton. And there are places all over Britain that are related to him. Likewise, there are also a lot of places that were named for other Celtic kings from the same period. And so there's a King Mark who was uh, ruler over a part of Dumnonia in Cornwall. And uh, they decided to name this place after him as well, on the other side of the country. Whether there's actually any link between the two places, who knows? But really all we have to go on is myths and legends. So what you mean, Peter, is he left his mark? That's for sure. Here we go, the landscape's just opening up a bit as we walk up. Old stones here. I wonder how long they've been there. Probably about 10 years. Okay. Now we can start to see why people lived here. That is a view. We're not quite at the top yet. As we ascend the hill fort, my mind wanders to the other travellers who came here over the years. The 19th century antiquarians who first found the place. the 20th century archaeologists who excavated it. But even more so to the fragments of written sources that survive from more than a thousand years earlier. Those words recorded by Welsh monks in the later Middle Ages. Like Viking sagas and Homeric tradition, thought to have originally been part of an oral tradition. An oral tradition heavily embellished down the centuries, though firmly rooted in the age when this place was in its prime. Great stories composed and sung by bards in mead halls, from the highlands to Cornwall. Those bards were so much more than simple court poets. Wandering figures like Aneirin and Taliesin had their own entourages. Great kings would vie for their patronage, the mightiest of which, like Yorian of Regeth, being immortalised for their efforts. surviving down the ages to today. Most famous of all, however, is a name you may recognize. One that in the 1500 years since has been twisted beyond all recognition.
you may know him under a different name. Merlin. Okay, so we're up at the top of the hill fort. 1400 years ago, this was a very important place. There have been items found here that originated in the Rhine River Valley. There have been items that originated in the Bordeaux region of France. Of course, there are items from the north of England, from Ireland, just across the sea, because this was a very well-connected place in the early medieval period. Just across these waters is the Isle of Man. Further along that way is Northern Ireland. And throughout much of the history of this place, these lands were intimately connected. Similar cultures would cross the sea because it's so much easier to take a boat across the water than it is to lug any trade goods or settlers over mountains. Now, this was a very important place during the early medieval times. Uh, smithies have been found here, creating elite metalwork. Stables have been found. These people were horseback riding Celtic warriors. And it was all good until the Anglians of Northumbria turned up. Because this place, when it was first excavated, it was realised that it was a vitrified hill fort, which means that the stone here was fired in such a way, in such a heat, that it fused together. And originally people thought that the reason why this happened was because of defensive reasons. But now it's been realised that that isn't necessarily the case. It, this may have been a final death ritual for this fort, whether it was the people who lived here or outside invasions. And the evidence suggests, the written evidence, the evidence from Bardic tradition suggests that Anglians came into this land, destroyed this place, leaving a fire on top of the fort that was so intense that it raged for weeks and destroyed any chance of anyone coming back here. Symbolically, the place was dead. And then for hundreds of years afterwards, we have Anglian items that are found in this area. But that isn't where the story ends, because afterwards we have Irish coming in, we have Vikings, Picts, Scots, all manner of people came here back in its heyday. So this is very interesting here. These stones may well be some of the original ramparts of the fort. Sometime in the seventh century, the whole entire place was burnt to the ground in such a ridiculously hot heat that the stones actually melted. And it's called a vitrified hill fort. So the Anglian war bands came in from Northumbria, torched the place for weeks. And everybody in the surrounding landscape, even people who might have lived here who escaped, they would have been able to see the flames burning on the horizon and know that, for them, their rule over this place had come to an end. But who actually lived here before that fall? Well, we simply don't know. Just as we don't know who led the assault. Of course, we can't definitively rule out a connection with Cornwall and King Mark. Just as we can't definitively rule out a connection with anywhere else in the early medieval British world. Unfortunately, like much of that time, the evidence just simply isn't there. There's archaeology to go on, but in the written sources, as far as contemporary or near-contemporary writing is concerned, mostly talking of the wars further south and to the east, the place is simply too peripheral to get a mention at all. Was it ruled over by the kings of Regeth, perhaps even the mightiest of them all, Urien? Maybe, but so far, we simply can't say.
as I fly the drone up over this stunning landscape, we're gifted with incredible views all around, from the hinterlands to the sea. The Galloway Forest off in the distance, and a number of other imposing rocks. I wonder how many served as outposts or beacon towers, warning of the approach of enemies. Deep in reverie, I suddenly realise I've no idea where the drone has gone, and I'm circling around the wrong hill. My heart begins to race, as of course, the controller stops receiving any information, politely informing me the drone is no longer connected. Battery getting ever lower. Oh good. few minutes pass, connection resumes, and finally, a landing is made. Phew. Right, well we'll get a di bit of a different viewpoint now. We'll get a peak cam. Don't forget your cameras. No. So I'm presuming that if this is the moat of Mark, there must have been a water surrounding it. Well, no, because it's the different spelling, isn't it? M-O-T-E, isn't that like a moat of dust? I think it was a bit of a, a bit of a harsh way of describing the place, saying it's a, oh, it's the tiny little fortress of Mark. Ah, okay. That's certainly got nice views from up here. Yeah, absolutely commanding view of anybody coming in and they could come in by boat you know twice a day yeah yeah that's a good point that's a good point yeah once the tide's out you're stuffed you can't go anywhere on a boat then yeah. i wonder if this uh, these islands out here have any sort of holy association because you quite often have you've got like bardsey island and whitorn island there's people over there that's it you can walk out it's a bit like sam michelle what's it called st yeah. michael's mount Saint Michel. I mean, there's two, and there's one on the either side of the sea. But it's a bit like that, isn't it? It's like a holy place. Saint Michel. That's it. That's the one. Lindisfarne. Lindisfarne, exactly, exactly. Holy Island. Holy Island, yeah. And I mean, quite often, you that's that would be where the uh, the holy men and the priests would live. Yeah. You have the military aristocracy living on the hill fort, yeah. and then you'd have the the holy people, the priests, out there. It's a bit like Bambra Castle. Of a, of a, of a building, no, no. But I mean, nothing survives from the early medieval period, you see. Over there, I can see fishing, though. It looks like um, mussels or things. Mm. And you see there's a little uh, jetty down there as well. Well, who knows? I mean, it may have just been coincidence be that it's there, but it's, it makes sense that yeah. there'd be some sort of habitation there. Yeah. For like early Christians, so. they tried to emulate Christ, didn't they? So they'd go to the remote place. Yeah. And that's sort of vaguely remote enough if you're not that holy. If you're only. Again, holy. Exactly. If you're only vaguely holy, you'll just go over there. Wait for the tides to come back in again. Yeah, not quite like St. Brendan, who would no, no, no. go out into the Atlantic on a little Korak. Not everybody was as hardcore as no. him. Fighting sea monsters, battling the elements. No, I think it's... How are we doing? Is this still on? Yeah, I think it's still on. Wow, what an amazing place to visit, and we've only just scratched the surface. This is the beginning of a journey through time, not just to the early Middle Ages, but much earlier too. There are many more videos on the way. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to join us 
and why not leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed the video. Where are your favourite places to visit? I'd love to hear from you. But we're not done just yet. We've got loads of the drone shenanigans on film as well. The comical Ike text. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think the problem is somebody might get the wrong, the wrong idea about Scotland if they see this one. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I've just added all the effects in Photoshop afterwards. It's really covered in fog and bleak. Right, okay, go ahead. Right, I've got to sanitise my entire body now. There's some nice birds over there. <laughs> Elbows away. Going through gates, 2020 style. So, another little history time adventure. Absolutely. A mini adventure. Nearly the drone that got away. <laughs> There were definitely some drone shenanigans. Now then, onwards to Trusty's Hill. So we've just been going through a place called the Whore of Ur. And uh, let's just have a look. We just looked up the uh, etymology of it. And lo and behold, from Old English, which tells you a lot about this place. Hundreds of years this was part of Northumbria. <laughs> <laughs>